Are you 27 now? I'm 27. Oh my God. Because I was reading the show notes from the last time you came on. 24 mm-hmm. year old. Oh my God. Influencer, former actress. Like I was yeah. <laughs> reading what I wrote. And that's you. You're also like beyond transformed. Mm-hmm. So much yeah. to say. Like you yeah. probably don't introduce yourself anymore as a former actress, or mm-hmm. maybe you do. I don't know. We have so much to talk about. I know we do. I mean, I don't particularly, but other people do. So I, mm-hmm. I'm I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. But you know, yeah, yeah. No, to- I was just laughing because yeah. I'm like I, <laughs> I've been around you lately, and and yeah. you're just so multifaceted. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. You. Thank so, you. welcome back. Thank I'm so you. happy that you're here. I just want to like grab your hand. I know. Because you're I just know. such a little angel in my Aww. life. You really are. You bring such a lightness wherever you go. I'm sure people can feel it online. And I really mm-hmm. feel it in person every time I see you. It's, it's very captivating. Thank you so much. I mean, I feel the same about you. So, I'm so glad to be back. And so real happy you. that you're here. This is an <laughs> upgrade, isn't it, from my dining room table? It is. I mean, I love your dining room table. It's gorgeous. Your your place is amazing. Are you still in that place? Same place. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that place. Yeah. So but that's we're in a studio now. We are studio it's official. savvy. It's <laughs> official, and it feels so good to have you here. We were just talking about the fact that you were on three years ago today basically. How synchronistic is that? That was not planned. I almost don't believe you because that is just, but I believe you, but that's so wild. It's wild. It's kind of like when I was sitting at La La Kind thinking about you and then you walked in front of me like a week ago. It's just crazy. Synchronicities are everywhere. I feel like too, you're so intuitive and that probably happens to you all the time. It does. Mm -hmm. And my mom will joke, like I've never seen someone run into so many people Mm -hmm. or just like a magnet for synchronicities. Mm -hmm. But I also look for them. Like I love that kind of stuff. Me too. Oh, I know. It's so fun. I love it. I know. I feel like I see, I have the number seven tattooed on me. um, And I just feel like I see it all day long. I'm like, the license plate in front of me is 7777 or you know like it's mm-hmm. 707 it's 717 so it's your angel number I know I just looked at the clock so I'm like what if it's now but <laughs> 223 um and I always remember that you were born on 77 mm-hmm. so wild 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 wait so, 223 isn't that three plus two plus two is seven Yes, there of course go. it's a seven. Like, of course. And <laughs> mine course. is two, 201. So, of course, I pulled up to this building at 201. Yep. So crazy. Wow. Reintroduce yourself to the audience for everybody who is new to you, which I'm sure so many people know who you are. But you've oh. transformed so much since the last time that you were on. Yeah. What have you been up to? What have I been up to? I mean, yeah, like you said before, you three years ago when I was on the podcast you introduced me as you know former actress and now um social media influencer um and I feel like it's hard to categorize yourself now especially in this kind of industry um it's hard to come up with like a one word sentence because I also feel like I'm kind of always changing and trying new things in the space but I've definitely focused a lot more on the wellness space and the content creation space. Um, I just really enjoy like working with brands that I'm super passionate about, helping them with content creation or events. Um, I just love building a community and being able to introduce people who are like-minded. And yeah, that's kind of what I've been up to. I love that. You're so good at hosting events. We were just at your event on Friday with BLK Water. Mm -hmm. And I was telling you, only you could have, I think it was 75. Yeah. Just such radiant, amazing people show up. Everybody was so excited to be there. You brought so many incredible treatments, lymphatic facials. There was Botox. Mm -hmm. There was a workout. Mm -hmm. You just are very good at it so that's a whole other calling like event planning slash bringing people together yeah I mean growing up I said I always wanted to be an actress or an event planner and I almost feel like I've manifested kind of like a collaborative (laughs) 
title yes. <laughs> in both of them because I'm like, I'm not necessarily performing, but I'm in front of the camera, um, which is just something that I've always felt very confident with since I was little. And now I'm getting to curate these events. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. And I just genuinely love, like I said, like being able to bring like-minded people together. And that's what on Friday, like I felt like I accomplished. So Mm -hmm. I was really happy about it. You did. It was so special and so much fun. It was. I've heard you say a lot online that you have these big dreams, like things you want to bring to life. And we were just talking about this too, actually. What are some of those things Mm -hmm. and how do you plan to bring them to life? Yeah. You know, I feel like I've felt a lot of pressure. There can be so much comparison uh, in any kind of world today um, with social media and whatnot. But I have felt a lot of pressure kind of at this stage in my career as kind of a content creator in the social media space that I'm supposed to, you know, come out with a product or a brand. And for a while, I was just putting so much pressure on myself. Like, what is it? What am I going to come out with? And I've worked a lot the last few months on just like really releasing that because I think that when the day comes where... I'm so clear on what that may be that I want to create and put out into the world. That will be the right time and it will be so authentic. I think sometimes being like, okay, like I need to come out with something and forcing it. It can be a little inauthentic and I've seen that happen a lot where it just, it doesn't actually go very well for people. Um, So right now I feel like kind of curating these days and events. I'm also just so, I'm, I mean, I'm obviously doing the right job because I'm so passionate about other people's brands. I love watching the growth of someone's baby, like, you know, become such an empire and supporting them along the way. And that is what my job is, Mm -hmm. you know, so um, I'm really just enjoying that right now. Um, Definitely. I've even gotten more into the beauty space just because I never cared about makeup or skincare in my life until the last like couple of years and now I just absolutely love it and so I'm just kind of like playing right now in my workspace and like seeing where that brings me. I love that. I think that's so wise and you're right. There's such a pressure as a content creator to come out with a product Mm -hmm. and people ask me all the time as well what kind of product are you going to do and I know it has to be inspired Mm -hmm. it has to be something you would want to do Mm -hmm. even if people weren't making you feel like you had to have a product exactly and there's so many other things that you can do with your time that are also really forward moving for your career yeah so very wise I'm glad you're not rushing it I feel like you will have a product but maybe in your 30s yeah you're 27 we were just talking about that and I also feel like because of social media and now we can experience success really great success so young Mm -hmm. that there's a pressure Mm -hmm. to okay you've done all this incredible stuff by the time that you're 27 you know, do more, do more. And it's not all about doing more. It's it's also about enjoying what you've done. Exactly. And I really will say, I feel like I, I do a good job at enjoying the ride mm-hmm. um, versus always being like, what's next? What's mm-hmm. next? Um, you know, there is that pressure as you get a little bit older. Um, I feel like I blinked and I was like in my late 20s. I feel like I was just in my early 20s. I don't know. I think because the pandemic too. I'm like, yeah. well, I went into the pandemic as a 23 or 24, probably a 24 year old. 
So I still feel 24. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. I feel like I blinked and I'm a mom. Yeah. And I was just a teenager. Right. I feel that way in my mm-hmm. heart still. Me too. And, and I'm like, how am I supposed to be responsible for someone else's life? Although it also has come naturally, but it's like that oh, weird feeling. You do an amazing job. Oh, thank you so much. You really do. Well, I'm proud of you. I'm proud thank of you. your transformation. Something that I really wanted to talk to you about was your current diet which I know is for gut health and hormones Mm -hmm. not because we're like dying to talk about food and diet because we're not there's like such more interesting things (laughs) but we're similar and that we've both been vegan for a long time yeah and there's so many reasons for someone to be vegan there's ethical there's health reasons you become passionate Mm -hmm. it's fun like the food scene of the plant-based world is fun and I think we both really enjoy it and we've always vibed on like the foods that we love and the brands that we love and now and you can talk about this for your specific reasons I know I have my own postpartum health reasons Mm -hmm. have had to incorporate a couple of other foods and it's hard so tell us what that looks like for you yeah I mean I know I feel like it's only it's only natural we talk about it today because that is truly I feel like what bonded us it's it's so exciting when you're when you kind of get super captivated by that transformation and you find a plant-based lifestyle it's so creative it's so fun there's so many like different it for me especially it was so different than the way I was raised Mm -hmm. um I saw like healthy food as such a like beautiful thing for the first time rather than a boring thing Mm -hmm. and yeah I mean I was vegan for about eight years and then um maybe seven years and then yeah recently I would say over the last couple of years I mean I the moment I went vegan and I have no idea if it was because of this um but I lost my period and I also lost an incredible amount of not incredible a large amount of weight (laughs) yes um and some of that being natural I think from just you know puberty and just growing up and becoming a little bit more active but also I think um you know I I probably wasn't eating enough so there was that aspect of it um you know I had gone through a health situation where I had to have like a little bit of a little surgery and so I have no idea where kind of it came from but I think maybe all those things compiled together I also went off birth control so I know that that can cause people to lose their period but I lost it and to this day I still have not had it again and um, that you know over the first few years you're kind of like okay well maybe it's just my body accumulating to not being on birth control anymore and the last couple years you know as I've entered into my late 20s it's like okay I need to change some things I've been ignoring it maybe and if I want to have a child one day and I just want my body to work like optimally as a as a woman so I need to make some changes and I saw so many different health professionals from eastern medicine to western medicine to you know acupuncture to chiropractors to Chinese medicine and there was not one health professional that didn't um, recommend to eat animal products which you know the first probably seven (laughs) I was like no sorry Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. (laughs) I don't care what you say I feel amazing and I've watched way too many documentaries and I care way too much about animals and the environment and my health to even like welcome that into my mindset um and then as things weren't switching and I was I even like I stopped working out as hard. I started to do just low impact workouts. I started to eat more protein, plant-based protein, and still nothing. And so that was when I was like, okay, I I need to open my ears a little bit to people who really, I feel like, 
I trust that they know what they're talking about. And so that's when just this, I would say two years ago, I started to eat fish. Um, And honestly, too, that was a really nice transition because a lot of the time in this job too you can travel you can go to dinners that have like set menus and that can be a little difficult sometimes when you're like I'm just gonna eat broccoli (laughs) very difficult (laughs) or fries yeah it's like there's no new there's not enough nutrition Mm -hmm. in that and so fish was a nice option It, it made me feel like okay I'm getting something like sustainable that's like making me feel nourished um and then um this year I've really you know been told and my blood work came back that you know red meat would really be beneficial and it's only happened a few times but I'm trying to just be patient with it to get into the mindset of having it I'm supposed to be having it a couple times a week so we're gonna get there it's only been about four times that I've had it and honestly it's so wild like listening to your body and the the cues you can get from your body I would have thought sitting in front of a piece of steak would have just made me cry or made me you know nauseous um I was drooling I was like drooling my stomach was like yes I want it I ate it did not feel sick at all and thought it tasted amazing which is so wild to me because if you were to put like chicken in front of me I don't get that same response but the red meat it was truly like my body was like I need that your body knew what it needed Mm -hmm. that's amazing yeah I can't tell you how much I relate and it's hard I Mm -hmm. mean I relate to everything you said plant-based is beautiful and exciting and also so different from the way that I was raised and will forever be a huge passion I wonder if you feel the way that I did it all which was like I don't know if I want to talk about this online Mm -hmm. for a while because I have a history with that anyway. I had the whole breaking vegan thing and and then I was vegan again and always painted in a light that I felt was weird and confusing to people. And I felt like I could have just kept it to myself and it would have been different. But I also share everything and I Mm -hmm. love to share. Mm -hmm. And I know that you do, too. So was there a time where you kept this to yourself and then you finally maybe felt like, oh, I'll talk about it because it'll help people? Or are you not as worried about that kind of stuff as me? Well, I understand why you would be even extra worried due to like probably the, I mean, I feel like too, it's different today than it was a few years ago. So different. The vegan community was just wild and aggressive. (laughs) Absolutely. Like I always say, the backlash that I got in 2014 never would happen today. No, it wouldn't. Like the posts broke the internet that I wasn't vegan anymore. Nobody cares anymore. It's like... I think actually people cheer you on now, which is great, but it's also weird because Mm -hmm. people have just so many issues around food. They have issues if you're vegan, if Mm -hmm. if you're not vegan, and the issues abound. So that's another reason why I haven't really known how to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, curious. I understand that. I mean, I think too, I don't know if you feel this way, but I feel like over the last even just like year or two that these kind of just one title diets are are kind of going out of style a little bit I feel like people are really focusing on just not titling themselves and just eating like good quality food there's so much information out there now and I just think that with all of these like tests being done and Um, the research being done that people are realizing that sometimes these certain lifestyle diets aren't as sustainable as we may have thought and to experiment more with other things and as long as it's like high quality I also feel like I don't know I, I have access to more high quality foods now like whether it be an animal product or not um and yeah I just I feel like a lot of the vegans that I knew that I bonded so well with too aren't vegan anymore Mm -hmm. because of certain health issues that it caused and or maybe it was other things causing the health issues too but it's always kind of been um, recommended to us to possibly incorporate animal products into our diet and so 
I think I was starting to really realize that, so it made me feel a little bit more like comfortable. I never, I, I know I was hesitant for like the first year, and now I've kind of just this year like opened up about it because I feel like saying it out loud for me with anything in my life um, makes me like feel better about it with myself like saying it out loud like I'm gonna have meat <laughs> everybody Same. I'm gonna yes. have meat makes yes. me feel like okay Alyssa you're going home and you're gonna have a piece of meat and it's okay I agree mm-hmm. yeah it's like that accountability with the yeah. community or the people around you or just to like you're a sharer too like me so it feels good to just kind of speak the experience totally yeah I love that yeah. I think so many people can relate and there's such a stigma around diet So I'm glad that you're talking about it and the labels and it's hard for many reasons for me still because I, like I said, love the plant based world, community, the restaurants, the products, Mm -hmm. but you can still love that even if you're eating meat and fish once in a while. Yeah, exactly. So anybody who needs to hear that out there, Mm -hmm. I'm really glad that Mm -hmm. you're talking about it and it is a trend for sure and I try to tell Jonathan for example because he became very diehard vegan because of me right um I mean because of him but like he was inspired right um we live together (laughs) we're married yeah and he is very he very much thrives on a vegan diet wow and because of that it's I think it was extra hard for me to even consider incorporating other things because I didn't want to disappoint him and Mm. he's so supportive but he also thinks he's being supportive by trying to remind me how good I feel plant-based and I can kind of fall off the wagon with things and so and he's seen me heal by being plant-based but that was like that was a time in my life when I really needed healing and this is a different time in my life so I've tried to explain to him Women are different, too. I was going to say, our, our hormones, hormones <laughs> are, are, are so delicate. And, of course, you need to get your period back. Mm-hmm. And I was postpartum and mm-hmm. probably still am considered postpartum. And you just need such different nutrients to get those hormones on track. Exactly. So have you experienced any changes with your cycle? No. No, nothing. We're still trying with all the things. Um I'm doing, yeah, like a gut reset right now because my, the Chinese medicine doctor I've been working with, he's amazing. And he has said that if we, I have like bacteria overgrowth and whatnot in my gut and that can really affect, like your gut can affect everything, right? So once we kind of um, figure that out and cleanse my gut (laughs) um then we can figure out if that's causing the adrenals to be out of whack because I think because the adrenals being out of whack is kind of causing my nervous system to still be in that fight or flight which isn't allowing me to have my cycle so Mm -hmm. it's a longer process when you're not just willing to like western medicine doctors say like just go on the pill Mm -hmm. and I'm like yeah I'm sure I'd get my period but um I just feel that that's a band-aid and that's not getting to the root cause of the problem and I always want to get to the root cause of the problem because I just want to live long and happy and healthy (laughs) me too and it does take longer the herbs the Chinese medicine the natural approach but because it's really working And imagine, you know this, how long it took your body to kind of swing that Mm -hmm. one way. And now it's swinging back in a healthy direction, Mm -hmm. which feels good. Yeah. I know you're going to get it back, have those healthy babies. It's going to be so good one day. It's going to be so good. And I've seen you talk about this online. You've been really open about your journey with weight. Yeah. And you've been, in the time that I've known you, you've talked about struggling at a certain time, really, really, really tiny. And yes. you couldn't be healthier, more radiant, Thank healthy. You, you, you are inspiration to me to like be strong and exercise because you prioritize that. Mm-hmm. So what has that journey been like for you? Yeah. Oh, it's a journey. And, you know, it's like it's never over (laughs) it's like a constant journey I have bad days good days but I do feel like I've gotten to the place where I know I I can feel intuitively like what my body needs and what 
makes it thrive and just the goal is just different now it's it's to feel and and be my best self not to um not to look the smallest um i think that that was definitely something that was the main goal i wouldn't have ever admitted it but for a while was to just be really tiny and i i made that goal happen but um now looking back it's just wild because um it just did not look healthy whatsoever um but you know your mind just tricks with you sometimes and i think that once i started to it's so hard because then they sometimes tell you when you're you know trying to get your period back to stop exercising and i'm like i think that there's a way this is how i felt i was like i think there's a way i can still exercise but do it differently and just really focus on fueling my body mind you i still haven't got my period back yet so i can't say that this is like a successful (laughs) a successful opinion but exercise for me makes me feel so empowered and strong and just really good in my body and so that is something I'm like not willing to give up um in this time in my life but I've really focused more on weight training and Pilates and you know I've I do a lot less of the HIIT workouts Mm -hmm. that a HIIT workout would only ever happen if I just was like wow I have so much energy right now and I need to get it out but that's not very often Mm -hmm. (laughs) much more for the for the slow chill workouts lately um but yeah like I just think that that has allowed me to to like be in this body that feels strong and like the goal that has made the goal change so much too it's like okay no like I it's not about what you know I always look like it's like how I feel and I Mm -hmm. think that working out has really allowed me to to feel into that more Yeah, no, that makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. I think to give that up, something that brings you peace, Mm -hmm. peace of mind. And we work out just as much for our mental health as we do for our physical health. It would be hard. And I get it. I Mm -hmm. do think it's it's the more high intensity workouts that can mess with women's hormones. Yeah, the cortisol Mm -hmm. can just spike it. Mind you, like, don't get me wrong. I do love a berries class once in a while. But at 7 a.m. when it's in a dark room and the red lights are on and they're like, burpees, <laughs> you're just like, I don't think this is good for my hormones no. right now. No, flashback to me running marathons and, and going to Orange Theory at 7 in the morning. Love mm-hmm. Orange Theory, obviously. But yeah. I had cystic acne. I was like 20 pounds heavier than I am now. And, it, and that wasn't healthy for me. Mm-hmm. It was like my body was so out of whack yeah and you learn you Mm -hmm. live and you learn and a lot of people wanted to know on that topic actually back to the gut health stuff that you're doing yeah what that looks like like what does the gut reset yeah like well actually I was so nervous to do it because I love what I love when it comes to food like there's things that I'm just like I look forward to every day um like hummus and <laughs> me too that sounds so lame <laughs> <laughs> no we're the same people are thinking i'm gonna say like cake and i'm like yeah hummus. Hummus no with carrots. but i love hummus but i also love like my baked goods and the treats and stuff um and so i was a little nervous but when my doctor i'm working with sent me over like what i can eat it's truly just it's not like many rules it's it's really just whole foods um no seed oils and nothing inflammatory so the hardest thing for me right now is I'm not supposed to have nuts or seeds because they can be inflammatory Um, that I will say has been the reason I probably have never actually started the gut reset (laughs) because I cannot give up like nuts and seeds I know it's so hard in everything I love I mean everything that we love like almond milk and every treat yeah I can have milks actually oh okay so that's 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 okay and I can have like real full fat coconut um Mm -hmm. so I'll do that but I'm just like oh a drizzle of tahini or a few you know huge scoops of 
almond butter or like the eat dough cookie dough that gets sent Love to me it. and I'm just I like I want to eat the whole jar um so you know we're we're still you know getting getting better with that but it's also not even just about what you can and can't eat it's um eating before coffee because mm-hmm. um, I'm still allowed coffee but one he says like one cup a day and make sure I eat something satiating and nur- nut- nutritious before and then making sure that I eat every two to three hours um, and not going long times without eating because I think before you know fasting for me was something that I did on a daily basis and I do not think that I know that especially men can thrive fasting and I love that for them (laughs) and I'm jealous sometimes for them because to be honest fasting for me it felt amazing at certain points I know like giving your body a a, and giving your body like that rest like it makes Mm -hmm. sense when you think about it but like we said us women we're different we got the hormones and they're (laughs) Roaring. They're, they're a struggle to deal with sometimes, but yeah, we got to keep are. our bodies fueled. We do. I know. I'm glad we're talking about this. This is a reminder for me too, because I love intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. I don't even do it because it's intermittent fasting. I just do it because it, it just feels right. Like mm-hmm. I'm never hungry in the morning. Mm-hmm. We are both digestive girls, like yes. digestive health. Yes. Um, stomach problems yes. girls and so it feels good to it give does. it a break and I love like drinking coffee on an empty stomach Same. it you know gets things it moving. gets things moving which for me is a huge struggle when I'm eating food in the morning mm-hmm. or if I mess you know with that whole routine but then I feel the adrenals crashing I feel the energy crashing I feel jittery anxious crazy <laughs> And it's tough. It's like major trade-offs. Of course, we want healthy hormones and balance. Yep. I know. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's why I said it's a journey. It's it's a journey. I'm figuring it out because, yeah, I get, I do have, I think because I grew up and I was so allergic to dairy, but they didn't have like, you know, oat milk and stuff like they do now. I'm speaking like I'm ancient, but they really didn't, you know? It's true, though. It was a different <laughs> it era. Was. It was like my parents said, because I had to drink soy milk as a baby because I was so allergic to dairy. Me too. Really? Yeah. They said they would go to like four different grocery stores and like have to go to the other side of town to try and find soy milk. If my parents are listening, they're dying because they did. <laughs> In the middle of the night, my dad would drive to the outskirts of Sacramento <laughs> to like find soy, soy yes. formula. Yes. That's yes. so funny. So so as like a, you know, 10, 11 year old, I'm not going to like try and search for soy milk ice cream. I'm going to just say, oh, well, I'll have a stomach ache and mm-hmm. hives all over my body and go and get the McFlurry. Yes. And I think that just really did my poor stomach some damage. And I'm still paying for it because yes. I eat a vegetable and my stomach is not feeling amazing. Mm-hmm. So it's like trying to find the things and also just doing the that's why I'm so obsessed with so many wellness things that I'm obsessed with like lymphatic drainage massages and stuff because I just feel like my sensitive body needs a little bit more help sometimes it does I feel the same and we're lucky we live in the best place for that and the best era for that Mm -hmm. because it's so popular it's so everywhere now and we both love the lymphatic facials yes. in Topanga oh. and just the whole lifestyle of anti-inflammatory because exactly. when you're inflamed it does make you really gravitate toward those things as a passion absolutely and I think so many people can look at s- those treatments and habits and think that it's strictly for vanity reasons and mind you of course like I love that my jaw is so chiseled after a lymphatic facial. However, it's been hard for me to try and like explain that to some people that like when you feel uncomfortable in your body because of how puffy or swollen or inflamed you are, like I'm not just going to do that to look sculpted like I'm truly doing these things and dry brushing in the morning and like putting that time and energy into those things 
to make myself feel better. Yeah, it's a lifestyle, Mm -hmm. totally. And it has so many added benefits. And I think a healthy lifestyle is anti-aging and youthful. Mm -hmm. But no, you're so right. I love the lymphatic facials for the sinus release, like for the dorkiest reasons. Like my ears will get so much pressure and I'll text Elizabeth like, I need you to release my sinuses. And obviously there are other amazing added benefits as I try to go Botox free at the age of 32 and look to those treatments. You're glowing. Thank you. I can't say I'm not tempted and I can't say I wasn't tempted at at your event. Very tempted, but it's the, (laughs) I have, Doctors, you know, for Lyme telling me that it's really not a good mix. Totally. And then sometimes I ask myself, how bad would it really be? (laughs) But I think it it could be. And I don't hold off as long as you look great. Thank you. Seriously. I I have to admit, I've I've been tempted and I've done it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, as as you should. And if I didn't have this like health indication, Mm -hmm. I absolutely would. There's no problem within it at all. That's the other thing. People can be so judgmental. I know. But I'm like cheering my friends on. We want everybody to feel good in the way that makes them feel good. Totally. And also, if there's deep rooted insecurities, you know, a few needles in your forehead's not going to fix those. It's truly just for me, it's like, you know, buying a really expensive lip liner Mm -hmm. (laughs) is like getting a little bit of filler. Like it's just a, oh, this is fun. This makes me feel a little bit better, but it's not fixing any Mm -hmm. problems, you know, and I would never try and do any type of kind of um, cosmetic procedure to fix any like deep insecurities in myself. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's good because yeah. it, it wouldn't do that, no. like you're saying. And I see why people think that it would or it could, mm-hmm. and it can give you a boost. Yeah. But everything's internal at the totally. end of the day. And that brings me to the other thing I really wanted to talk to you about, which was mental health. Yeah, We are both anxiety girls and digestive girls, anxiety <laughs> girls. And then we've talked a little bit about off air, Mm -hmm. your journey with Justin, your Mm -hmm. boyfriend, and he struggled, which of course you want to take care of him. You're nurturing cancer. So I would love for you to talk to us about that. Yeah, it's been, um, it's interesting because I do feel like having a partner that understands mental health is so helpful. I can't imagine, you know, my, my family, not one single person in my family has any, or at least that they know of, any mental health struggles, issues. Um, I don't even really know that they understand what anxiety feels like. They, I think they think that's more of like being a little nervous, mm-hmm. um, which is so cute. Yes. And like just so wholesome of them. It <laughs> is. It's lucky for them. Yeah, it really is. But that was something that I felt like maybe I wasn't really understood with. Um, growing up I was just always the very emotional one you know writing poetry in my journal while crying listening to a song and my parents would be like is she okay um but like also enjoying it while I was doing it you know cathartic (laughs) yeah exactly and so I think you know meeting someone who really understands it and being able to like be comforted by them when I'm going through my anxious moments is so nice. Um, however, we do, my my partner and I really have different types of anxieties. Mine's definitely more physical and I feel it in my body first before I even know what, where it's coming from. And um, his are more ruminating thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so different and um, being there for someone who's really struggling it can be you know I feel like I'm my friends kind of call me a sponge sometimes because I can take on the energy around me so intensely Um, so that's also been a struggle but also like a challenge to to strengthen myself to be able to be there for somebody but not take on everything something I'm still working on but um, yeah I I'm I'm glad in a way that there's that understanding there, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, I'm so glad that you guys have that too. Mm-hmm. It's special and unique and I'm sure it presents 
different challenges mm-hmm. because two sensitive people, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. But thank goodness you can understand each other. Yeah. It's, it's so special. It is. I was just on the topic of families and stuff explaining to my parents the anxiety, the panic attacks, OCD, mm-hmm. kind of stuff that I've been experiencing. Yeah. And my mom totally gets it. Like, I, I get it from her. Okay. And being a sponge, I actually soak it in from her. Mm-hmm. So I don't even know how much of it is mine half the time. Mm-hmm. Um, where my dad, so hilarious, bless his heart, we were sitting at Soho Malibu, and he's like, I've never felt anything like that in my entire life. Wow. I do not know what you're talking about. And we were just like. What a life. You, <laughs> yes, what a life. And I know, and he you know, wouldn't care if I said this, like he just won't let himself feel it. And mm. I do think we're just deeply feeling people, yeah. all humans, but some of us, some people can turn it off. Mm-hmm. I can't, <laughs> you yeah. can't, like it's just who we are. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, wow, imagine. imagine. Yeah, and then Jonathan, my husband, who you know, yeah. he tries so hard to get it. And he just like tries so hard and him and Atticus will go like get me flowers and and try to help when I'm having a harder time um but he too like your family is just more like oh wow that's not an emotion that I know yeah at all yeah and it's so interesting how we're all so different so different it's it's so interesting to me too because it can just come out of nowhere I can be like in a great place uh, at least I think. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oof, I am feeling anxiety. And it's so interesting because my boyfriend will be like, oh, like from what? What are you thinking about? And I'm like, no, no, no. It's it's not a thought thing for me. Like it's just like it comes physically. Like my stomach yeah. will like be in knots. My heart's kind of racing and I'm a little lightheaded. And that's what it is for me. Whereas for him, it's always kind of starts with a thought Mm -hmm. and then it rumorates and then he feels anxious so he knows exactly where it's from yeah wow that's so interesting yeah I'm more like you it's Mm -hmm. very physical it's like I could suddenly be having heart palpitations not really understanding where they're coming from and I've learned and this could be true for you as well that it's also being empathic being psychic and whatever you know however Mm -hmm. deep you want to go into that term it's like picking up on other people's feelings and that's why sometimes I believe we can't even trace it back to a thought Mm -hmm. it's like oh I picked up someone else's panic attack in the store or in my home (laughs) um and it doesn't have to be a panic attack but anxiety totally I was we were Justin, my boyfriend and I were just talking last night and we were talking about how, like, in what ways have we grown um, since we've started dating? And we were kind of just like listing off things and all good things. Um, And then, you know, we're he was saying so many amazing things. And he was like, however, I do feel like maybe you've become even more of a people pleaser. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. Like, I feel that like so much and I think that that also brings in anxiety because when you put that as such a priority and then also you want other people to be so pleased when they're not then you take on their I don't know like disappointment or their anxiety or their stress or whatever and you just want to make it better so much so then that makes you even more anxious you're oh. describing my life. Really? I mean, <laughs> all I care about and I try like actually this year mm-hmm. for me is all about not being this way or trying to heal from this people pleasing way of life mm-hmm. where it's like anyone, anyone, if I feel that something could have been misconstrued or they might be mad or I've disappointed mm-hmm. them, that will ruin my life. Me too. Yeah. It's and very hard. It's hard to be that way. It's so hard. And I see like for example my best friend Samantha she is just like like not one single person on planet earth could say one bad thing about her she is just the lightest brightest angelic human ever and you would think almost that someone like that who everyone just loves so much and gets so much from and she gives so much that 
she might be a people pleaser as well. And I'm not speaking for her. Maybe she feels like she is in certain ways. I have no idea. But uh, when I see her have all these boundaries, like, oh, no, I'm, I'm not doing that or this, I'm like, oh. That's so inspiring. Mm-hmm. I am so attracted to that. I like, know. and two, it's when she does that. It's like no one's offended, no one's angry, or maybe they are, but they're gonna keep that to themselves because they they. It's almost like you respect someone so much when they're like setting those self boundaries, and they're not doing it out of like anger or anything but just self-respect for themselves exactly yeah it's never personal never is the thing. yeah and most people understand that mm-hmm. some people don't and yeah it's, right. it's a tough line to walk mm-hmm. but I try so hard to have those boundaries that's my 2023 era of Jordan Me to be too. like no actually I don't do that and I'm not going to do that mm-hmm. or I can't um and then you make space for so yes, many better opportunities exactly. that you actually want to call in. Exactly. Yeah. I love that for us. Me too. Which brings me to, if you had a word for this year, what era are you in? My word for this year is free. Yeah. So, which, you know, really plays into the people pleasing thing because I, I, I've had this sense of, honestly, my entire life, the word that comes up a lot when I feel like I'm not living in my alignment is trapped and to be honest I've dreamt every time I'm minorly anxious I dream that I'm in prison and my biggest fear is to be in prison (laughs) I swear I'm not doing anything illegal (laughs) ever (laughs) but um yeah and that's always been a thing and I spoke to like a channeler psychic one time and she said that the reason I dream about that is because there's certain areas in my life that I'm feeling trapped. And I said, that's exactly how I feel. And I think there's probably many things that come about in my life that can make me feel that way, but especially like the people pleasing. It's like almost like I'm, I'm, I feel very obligated and it makes me feel like I'm trapped and not free to like spread my wings and do the things that just make me feel so alive and so the word for this year is to release all of that and to just live free i love that so much well and i relate like i have those prison dreams i have fears too and i feel like they come from past lives yeah you could have been put away in a past life for not even doing anything wrong I yeah mean, I feel it's kind of crazy I was definitely in a lot of like mental hospitals in past lives because that is what they would do with like right intuitive women and ah oh, that's my biggest fear Oof, like just thank goodness we live in, in this <laughs> century yes thank goodness oh for gosh. sure I want to do this wellness smash or pass with you because you're the perfect person Ooh, smash or pass we are wellness lovers colonics Yes. <laughs> we oh, love. wait. Sm- smash. smash. Yes. Smash. Enemas. <sighs> I wish I could say smash, but it's a little too messy for me. So I got to say pass. <laughs> but I hopefully maybe I can get to a smash at the end of this year. Yeah. No, I love this. <laughs> um, adaptogens. Oh, smash. You love those. I do too. Matcha. Smash. I don't like matcha for some <gasps> reason. Isn't that weird? Have you tried Nekohama though? No. Okay. We're getting you some. Okay. It's my friend's brand. And uh, it's actually unfortunate because now I have a really hard time. I feel like the two I can have are Nekohama and Bloom because they're like high, high quality. And then all the other ones taste like dirt yes. to me. That's how they taste to me so far. Yeah. I just love coffee so much me too. Me too. I know. It's hard. Um, Reiki. Smash. Mm. Haven't done it in a while, but yeah. Psychedelics. I am fearful, but I actually really want to partake this year. Ooh. So I will be smashing this year. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Uh, We can make that happen. I want to. We should do it together. I would love that. That would be my dream. Absolutely love that. Like maybe like in the desert. Yeah. That's always been my dream. Yeah. That was (laughs) the first place I ever did it. Okay. And that was the vibe. Okay. Um, Sober curiosity. Oh, smash. 
Uh, manifestation. Smash. Yes. Absolutely. Some of these I already know the answer to so <laughs> much. Sauna cold plunge. Oh, you're so obsessed. Smash, 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 smash. Smash a million times <laughs> over. Do you like to meditate? Yes, every day. Smash. What type of meditation? I really like Joe Dispenza meditation. Me too. Um, that's the list. So I'm glad you had a couple that. passes because like I'm notorious for smashing every single <laughs> wellness thing. There's not many wellness things that I pass on. Yep. But yeah, I'm pretty open to it. You know, yeah. like if someone says it's going to make me feel good, sign me up. I know. I know. I love that. Um, yeah, I had a question about that. I want to find it because it was really good. Is there a wellness thing that you're not into mm -hmm. that like people love and is just not for you? Oh, I'm trying to think. Let me think here. Is there a wellness thing? I'm like, nope, I love them all. Like celery juice or Ooh, like. Okay, 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 yeah. Um, well, juice cleansing, it's not for me mm -hmm. at all, at all. Um, I don't do celery juice, but just because I don't have the willpower to not have a cup of coffee and switch that with a celery juice. Mm -hmm. Like if only the celery juice trend was like later in the day, like after the coffee I know. And stuff. <laughs> but I did do it for a week one time and I felt the health benefits and it felt amazing. Mm -hmm. So no, I, I do stand by that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And that's a phase in life too. It's like if you really need that cellu cellular healing, yeah. then celery juice is amazing. I too have a lot of trouble doing it first thing in the morning because I feel very nauseous in the morning. Like I can only have certain mm -hmm. things. I did it religiously for years. Yeah. But time and a place. Yeah. We go through waves of, of things. We do. Yeah. If you could give your younger self advice, mm -hmm. so Alyssa at the age of 17, mm. what would you tell her? I would tell her to, I guess I would just say that everything is going to work out and to just focus less on vanity things mm -hmm. and focus more on what's going to make you feel your best. I love that. Mm -hmm. And if you could talk to your future self, so Alyssa at 65, mm -hmm. what would you say to her? I hope she's living freely. I hope she's just, yeah, not living by any rule book and still spreading love mm -hmm. and yeah I simple that. as that that's so beautiful it's so crazy because as we've been sitting here I've been seeing your face shape shift as I do um I really, really oh me. yeah so what I does that look see like? that in people and I feel like something at Dear Media under the lights it makes it easier for me to even see people shape shifting under the spotlight yes and it usually happens the most with people who have done a lot of work on themselves mm -hmm. and are somewhat spiritually open because mm -hmm. that's when those veils lift. If people have a really big wall, I can't see anything. Mm -hmm. Now you're opening up all your veils and now really? I can see everything. Yes. Tell me. So when you were talking about your older self, she yeah. came through. I saw you at 65 and she. In, I see her now too. Oh really? my God. Yeah. She's so present with you giving you mm. so much love she's love saying that. you're definitely on the right path right direction and i'm seeing spirit animals come through i'm seeing Ooh. a gorilla oh and that's a really powerful symbol okay which we can look up after this yes i saw it in kenzie a few years ago like this gorilla was like jumping out of her and really? when we looked up the symbology it was exactly what she needed it was wow. her spirit animal so that's here for you right now too Wow. And tons of angelic energy. There's white light all around you. Your mm -hmm. aura is huge. It takes wow. up the whole room. So now I can't see anything in the room except for your eyes. Seriously. <laughs> wow. It's cr everything is white. I would just love to like be in your brain for one day. <laughs> it would it's be crazy. amazing. It's crazy. It's, it's fun. <laughs> and now you're back to you. Like 
but you opened up all of your your veils for me so thank you because that takes a really open person and you can open a lot like just so you know that about yourself Mm -hmm. you just peeled back way more layers than most people do wow especially in a room like this so that was beautiful well it's your energy you make everyone feel safe so thank you appreciate it thank you so much wow so quickly i'll ask Mm -hmm. you a few other questions even though i'm still like caught up in your aura (laughs) everywhere um (laughs) what are you we know your sun sign yeah you know your rising and moon signs of course of course course um so yeah sun cancer Mm -hmm. moon scorpio rising cancer oh my god you're triple water (laughs) triple water you're the exact same as my mom that's why i went like oh my god crazy because rare first of all but like that triple water so powerful i see it in you so much and i see the similarities in her (laughs) yes um when she's really like standing her ground i'm like oh you are in your scorpio (laughs) moon like yeah it's that like bitchy but mm-hmm. amazing energy that mm-hmm. everybody needs to have oh, yeah. a little bit of I've that because if you're a triple cancer like that would be tough um yes because like that cancer is just so warm yes a little so loving bit aggressive in intensity with mm-hmm. the scorpio yeah <laughs> but so many feelings yes oh my god like full water and i have i think i have five placements of cancer and like three of Scorpio. I only have like one Sagittarius and one Virgo and the rest are water. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. So you don't really have any air then? No. Wow. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Because I'm all air. Are so you? I, I do. And I have water too. Okay. Cancer moon. But I have a lot of air. Maybe that's why I'm attracted to people with air because like I need it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes sense. What's your sun, moon and rising? I'm a Libra sun. Yeah. Cancer moon. Okay. Aquarius rising. Okay. Three planets in Libra, three planets in Aquarius, which are all air. Mm -hmm. And then like that Cancer moon is pretty prevalent. And Chiron in Cancer, which is the wounded healer in the sixth house of health, which makes a lot of sense because of what I've been through with health. Right. We should look at your whole chart. I know. I need to look at it again. Yeah. And then your human design for everyone listening. What is it? I'm a manifesting generator. Do you know the the numbers, the authority? Six and two. Oh, six two. Six Aww. two. You're yeah. such a manifesting generator. Yes, I love I, it. So I much. really am. <laughs> yes, multi passionate. Like we to love do it. So many different things. Yes. Yes. And finally, if you could be in a room with three people, mm-hmm. living or dead, who would they be? Oh my goodness, that's okay. Robin Williams. I oh, love him. I know. I love him. Um, okay, this is actually, it. what's cool is that I always would say, like, uh, it was a couple years ago, um, I would say Robin Williams and Jay Shetty, and then I became friends with Jay Shetty and went to his house for dinner, and what? I'm like, well, that's cool. Um, that's so cool. Yeah, my boyfriend and I were talking about it on the way to his house for dinner. He was like, wasn't he your person if you could have dinner with anyone and I was like yeah you're right and we're literally going to have dinner that um, is such an amazing epic. person though so so manifested yeah so manifested and um to be honest I've been listening to a lot of Gabby Bernstein lately so I feel like I would absolutely just love to have dinner with her yeah so she's another that um, room would be room would be great epic that's like the most in alignment with people that I love than, mm-hmm. than anyone has ever answered that question. I really? love all of those people. Oh, yeah. How did you become friends with Jay Shetty? He is just such a light. He's so amazing. Like I honestly like was just an open fan of his podcast and he like received that so great. And I think a lot of things that I share are um probably inspired by the things that he shares and so they can come across as similar sometimes and so we've just like kind of bonded over that and he's such a amazing supporter of people's brands and people's voices and um he's always supporting my boyfriend's clothing line and he's yeah he's just been a huge inspiration and I think that he 
likes to have that purpose of being people's inspiration. So it's really like connected and I love his wife. His wife is such a light as well. She's amazing. So we've gotten along and that's why I'm just like, you can manifest anything, you know? Yes. You really can. I agree. I really do. Mm -hmm. When I look at my list from a long time ago too, a lot of the, like for the podcast, for example, or who you would want to be in a room with, Mm -hmm. a lot of them have been on. And sometimes like you forget when you're living in the moment of your life and my listeners will remind me, they're like, remember that that was your top goal in life. It's so cool. I know it's, it's crazy how we sometimes forget. I feel like it's Mm -hmm. almost like disassociating because you're just, it's like maybe a little bit of imposter syndrome sometimes. And you're like, how is this happening? What am I doing here? And (laughs) yeah, exactly. So those little wake up calls that people can give you and you're like, wow, yeah, I'm proud of myself. That's cool. It's really cool. Well, I love you so much. You're you. such an angel. Now that I've seen so deep into your soul and your aura, I love you even more. Mm. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Three years later. Three years later. We were trying to remember how many times you had been on, but I think it was just the once. Yeah. And this will not be the last. Mm. Thank you so much. Tell everybody where they can find you. Thank you so much. You can just find me at Alyssa Lynch on all social media platforms. Amazing.